I wanted to create this short video to talk about the association between fasting and your appetite and your nutrient levels. Now, as soon as people start doing fasting, their appetite goes away, they feel better, less inflammation, better energy, cognitive function. And the real big focus that everyone has their attention on is weight loss. Uh, the more weight they lose, the healthier they think they are. But just realize that when you lose weight, that's just one part of getting healthy. So what happens is you cut down your carbs, you go on a fast, you're no longer burning up all your stored sugar, you're actually tapping in your fat, so you're running on your fat fuel, and because of that, your appetite is gone, right? So you work your way up to one meal a day, and this goes on for months and months and months until you achieve your goal. Now, what I notice with some people is they start dropping out the healthy version of keto. They start pretty much eating whatever they want on that one meal a day. The problem with that is they could potentially start developing nutritional deficiencies, not right away, but down the road. Now, depending on what nutrient deficiency we're talking about, it could take longer or shorter. For example, B12 could be stored uh, up to a year. So that might not show up right away, depending on how much you have in reserve. Uh, the B vitamins, for example, like B1, uh, even potassium doesn't get stored for very long. So you can run out of those real fast. So if you're feeling great when you start this and then down the road, you're getting tired, dizzy, weak, you don't have any endurance, you have hair loss, maybe your nails are become brittle, or you start getting mood changes or even cognitive issues, suspect that you may have a nutrient deficiency despite losing weight and having no appetite. So the main point on this video is I just wanna put your attention on this. When you do fasting, make sure that you do the healthy version of keto. Ensure that that meal that you do consume is really nutrient dense, whether it's uh, one meal a day or two per day, or one every other day. And I would highly recommend also enhancing your food with additional supplements because it's really difficult to get your nutrients even with three meals a day. Now it is true that when you go on one meal a day, the requirements go down. However, just to make sure, I would recommend that you're supplementing with uh, omega-3 fatty acids, unless you're doing salmon and fatty fish um, maybe every other day. Also, you wanna make sure you get enough protein. If you're doing one meal a day, um, that might end up minimally eight ounces, maybe up to 10 ounces, maybe even more, depending on your age, if you're an athlete, um, and how you feel. Some people just need more protein. Also, there's a lot of people doing keto that are not doing enough vegetables. So if that's the case, you better be taking minerals, trace minerals, vitamin C, and maybe even some folic acid. But the best thing to do is to beef up your vegetables, no pun intended. Uh, vitamin E is also found in vegetables and nuts. Some people, especially women, if they're past menopause, definitely need more vitamin E to help them with the transition and also to minimize um, side effects like um, hot flashes, for example. Um, if you're gonna do vitamin E, make sure you find one that doesn't just have tocopherols, but it also has tocotrienols, which is the other part of the vitamin E complex. And vitamin D is almost impossible to get in your diet nowadays, so I would highly recommend taking that as an additional supplement. All right, so I just wanted to bring up this point that over a period of time, if you start feeling any of these symptoms right here, it could be a nutrient deficiency. And despite losing weight and having no appetite, there's still issues. But I will say that if you're low on vitamin B12 or low on vitamin D3, that alone could actually also create a lack of appetite. But usually if you're doing animal products, you're not gonna have a problem with B12. But vitamin D is definitely a common problem for a lot of people, especially if they don't get enough sun and also in the winter. All right, there you have it. Thank you for watching. So if you want more knowledge on how to create a healthy body, subscribe now and get daily notifications.